Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I will make my speech in French in honor to the French people here in this auditorium. And if I make any mistake, uh, please do not consider it. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to be here sharing this extraordinary initiative of the Global Positive Forum. I want to thank dearly Jacques Attali, one of the most brilliant intellectuals I have the privilege to know. Jacques Attali has been defending important, original, and innovative ideas for decades, not only in France, but also at global level. It is important to recognize that the ideas discussed at the Global Positive Forum are an inspiring source for the whole world, and more particularly for all managers in the public and private sectors who bear the responsibility of helping to build a better world for future generations. It is incredible that almost all the ideas that are being debated here strike a chord with different situations on the ground throughout the world. This means that there are no problems that are particular to such and such place. Problems are local and global at the same time and the experience of creative, daring responses need to be systematically shared by all of us. I'm certain I will leave here with some inspiring ideas that may be applicable to a city like Sao Paulo. When I think of the challenges facing Sao Paulo, I'm more convinced than ever that it is essential to build a new form of governance that gives absolute priority to the most disadvantaged population. And at the same time, we need to focus on the future, the future of new generations. In principle, every action by a public administrator should always be preceded by the following question. Will this proposal help create a better future for new generations? If we can give a positive answer to this question, that will be the way ahead. We have stated that there are uh, many inefficiencies in the public sector in countries like Brazil and more particularly in cities like Sao Paulo. My city is the seventh largest in the world and the third largest capital in the world. We have 12 million inhabitants in Sao Paulo. Our aim is to try and reduce historical inefficiencies that consume and waste public resources, which could be used exactly in, in, in the interest of those who need them most through constructive initiatives which are going to be socially focused. Public administrations often content with limited resources to handle all the challenges facing them. There are the challenges of the present and the future. And in emerging countries like Brazil, with a great social inequality, public administrators must strive for the efficient and transparent use of budgeted resources. I truly believe it's a big mistake to suggest there is a conflict between economic efficiency and social ends. Very often we hear claims according to which the permanent pursuit of efficiency hits the most vulnerable. In my mind, this is mistaken. I think the exact opposite. I think complacency with inefficiency and waste in the name of an allegedly combating inequality 
is very unfair, especially towards those who most need it. The pursuit of efficiency combined with social aim should always be an obsession for public administrators simply because there is no time to lose. As one of the themes of this forum suggests, we have to speed up this positive revolution. These are challenges that cannot be put off. And we in San Paolo are totally committed to that, to speed up positive revolution. Many of these challenges are challenges from yesterday or decades ago, and facing up to them has been systematically postponed. These problems are so urgent that the inefficiencies are creating unacceptable costs and bureaucracy today. Society will no longer tolerate putting up with these problems and taking a passive approach to them. Within this objective, we in Sao Paulo have made an investment in social innovations, the aim of which is to facilitate the dynamism and range of public services. We are encouraging innovation and strengthening of startups that focus on generating opportunities and improving public services in our city precisely to attend people more efficiently. Startup, social startup are the big bet we met to face urban solutions. This requires creativity and audacity, such as, for example, in recycling trash and household and municipal waste, but also in modernizing public transportation and urban mobility. Innovation is decisive in order to overcome the serious problems of today and for the future. Many people have not yet realized that democracy has become digital and that public business models need to be radically overhauled as they're still and illogical and archaic. When we talk about the role of the state in taking on the present challenges, we should ask ourselves, and first of all, what, can, what is the state we are talking about? Are we talking about the state of the 20th century and of uh, the success of which is historically out of date? Or is it the state of the third millennium in the city of Sao Paulo, challenges and problems are gigantic, and it would be impossible to try and address all the issues without thoughtful and innovative policies. This also involves the need for public service concessions and the privatization of um, government assets because we cannot justify holding series of assets in the hands of municipal government. The resources from these concessions and privatization of assets will be earmarked to developing the poorest population in the, pop in the city. Concession and privatization of certain assets do not on only aim at increasing the efficiency of public government. But we believe there is no reason why the uh, municipal government should own the exhibition hall or other assets which are still useful for the population in San Paulo. In our point of view, what should we protect? Should we protect what's really part of the public domain? i.e. public domain for public benefit. We believe this is our responsibility, and we don't believe that the government should own everything. We need to enhance what is public, but not what is state. And 
There is a frequent condition, uh, confusion between what is public and what is state-owned, and we want to clear this up. This is an essential principle as far as we're concerned and in Sao Paulo and has plays an important role in inspiring initiatives. Some initiatives in Sao Paulo requires immense deployment of the private sector. We've made a giant effort to empower the private sector and make them responsible for social projects directed at at future generations. In some cases, I even feel the initiatives that we're carrying out in Sao Paulo could serve as an inspiration to other public administrators in different countries. I'm thinking here of the matter of health in Sao Paulo. When we took over the town hall in January this year, there were four hundred and seventy six thousand people on the waiting list for medical imaging exams. That's totally unacceptable. We managed to convince a private network of 44 hospitals with exceptional quality to carry out these imaging exams at the same cost as a municipal health network during the periods when their equipment was not being used at full capacity, more specifically at night and early hours in the morning. The acceptance of our appeal by part of the large private hospitals network was uh, really significant, and we got rid of this waiting list and provided um, exceptional quality service for people in need. We're using a similar approach in surgery, and the cost to the city government restricted to was restricted to overtime payments for doctors and paramedical staff. Another of the most urgent challenges is the education of children at precisely the most crucial period of their cognitive ability, i.e. from zero to six years of age, and also in basic education. We've made an all-out effort to ensure that municipal education in San Paulo City is helping to shape these children right from the kindergarten to the end of basic learning by providing top quality services. The future of these children will depend on our ability to provide them with a differentiated primary education. We've relied on the help of the private sector, which is supporting us with IT equipment, computers, and tablets. Just one American company gave $1 million, uh, $100 million, sorry, Laissez-toi privé qui nous soutient avec des équipements informatiques, des ordinaires et des tablettes pour accomplir cette mission et former une nouvelle génération de jeunes prêts à un nouveau défi d'un monde de plus en plus complexe. En conclusion, j'insiste qu'on doit bâtir une gouvernance soutenable dans le temps et qui soit résistant aux intérêts corporativistes, politiques ou antithétiques. Les générations futures vont sûrement nous remercier. Comme nous a enseigné le grand poète et philosophe, et philosophe Paul Valéry, les problèmes avec notre temps, c'est que l'avenir n'est plus qu'il était. Nous devons aussi comprendre que la vitesse de transformation et ses impacts sociaux et économiques sont très dramatiques aujourd'hui et ceci nous oblige à avoir une vision différenciée du futur. Nous devons suivre et accélérer les transformations, ainsi d'indiquer avec détermination l'agenda d'avenir. Priorité actuelle pour les plus pauvres et défavorisés. Vous savez qui est un jeu au Brésil, recevoir le forum de l'économie positive est donc euh, un symbole majeur pour montrer que la 
progrès social est une énergie d'être en prendre. Rendez-vous, rendez-vous tout, donc à São Paulo, à 2019. Merci beaucoup pour l'opportunité d'être ici et d'interagir avec des importants leaders mondiaux. Nous avons toute une responsabilité globale pour un monde meilleur et plus solidaire. Merci beaucoup à tous. Ne bougez pas, ne bougez pas, ne bougez pas Reta. Bravo. Hein. Merci. On peut le féliciter en français, s'il vous plaît. Au bon les gars, hein. Vous ne bougez pas. Jacques Attali et Richard Attias rejoignent Jouan Doria pour une annonce. À l'instant, venez, messieurs. Bravo. que nous sommes très heureux de faire un forum en 2019 à Sao Paulo. Merci beaucoup.